Well, that's enough talking about quick cricket. More about music. I'm Alex. I'm James. And I'm Dan. And this is the Ragamuffin Music Podcast, a place for us to talk about the music we love. Every month we get together, talk about the latest news, music and trends in the world of alternative music. On this episode, we are reviewing the latest singles from some of the best of British metalcore with While She Sleeps and Buried Tomorrow, as well as new tunes from Five Finger Death Punch, Electric Cool Boy, Upon a Burning Body, and also a deeper discussion reviewing the latest album from Pup. And album reunion tours. We're going to be discussing them. Which ones we'd like to see, which ones we've missed, which ones we'd like to make happen. But first, we'll take a look at the news. Sad news to start with, Dance Gavin Dance bassist Tim Fearick has passed away. The band confirmed this in a statement on April 14th. In a subsequent statement, said they would be continuing with their upcoming tour and album release, dedicating the tour to his memory. Um, just heartbreaking news. I mean, I'm not going to claim to be a big Dance Gavin no. Dance fan, but news like this does shake the whole scene up, really. And it's admirable that the band's going to be carrying on and they're going to be playing some shows pretty soon as well. Yeah. In more positive news, Avril Lavigne and Mod Sun are now engaged. After Mod Sun popping the question while the couple were taking a break in Paris, the two have been dating for just over a year before cementing out with the engagement. So congrats to Mod Sun for locking down what I think might be my first celebrity crush when I was younger with Avril Lavigne. I just remember watching it, her it's on gonna, Top of the Box. It's going to be all right, James. It's fine. I Just sadness. Um, but, but props to him. Fair play. Congratulations to them. And with him performing at Slam Dunk in roughly a month's time, maybe we'll see an Avril Lavigne secret set. So, win-win. Mm. First celebrity crush. Oh, yeah, she was incredible. Fair enough. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Slipknot. Yes. Um, Slipknot have unveiled plans for something called the Knotverse, um, with they're planning to release unique NFTs, Metaverse concerts, and a lot more. They've partnered with a group called The Sandbox. Um, there's apparently going to be plenty of stuff for maggots to enjoy, as well as NFTs. Metaverse concerts are going to be gaming experiences, fan experiences, some unique collaborations, even some wearables. Um, Clown has said that when I started playing Quake online in 1999 and Minecraft in 2011, it was on another level. But at the time, I could have Sid. Scr- I couldn't have Sid scratching next to me. I couldn't offer visual art to fans. All we could do together was play the game. But little ideas like that are not only possible now; they barely scratch the surface. We are listening, we are watching, and we are going where our fans are leading us to. Sorry, <laughs> sorry to be laughing. I just immediately got this vision of clown <laughs> strip mining in a cave while <laughs> wearing his mask. <laughs> yeah, I just picture him sat there with the with the Minecraft music going, and he's just strip mining. Bing, he's like, bing, "Oh, I better get bing. back soon." Pickaxe is about bing, to. Bing. <laughs> he's, getting, he's getting a message from like yeah. the band say we got to do practice, and all of a sudden a creeper comes around the corner <laughs> on his screen. Oh shit! <laughs> there must oh. be a slip in that Minecraft mod. Oh, oh, there's got to be. I don't want to find that now. Oh, Possibly man, I'm sorry. That just, just that. really, really got to me. Um, <laughs> yeah. The news. Anyways, <laughs> Slipknot are planning some metaverse stuff. Oh, I'm, I'm not I'm not convinced that they're convinced. The thing is, I I have paid no attention, really, and have not looked into, really, anything to do with metaverse. Apparently, there's some better, more greener ways that there are NFTs, but, I, again, I haven't looked into it too much, so... Most of it kind of passed me by. I know you mentioned you saw a video with M Shadows talking about NFTs and like you were able to understand it a little bit differently yeah. in terms of what they're trying to give to their fans. But to me, this is still something that I'm like, okay, they've announced something. One of my favorite bands have announced it, but it doesn't really affect me because I don't pay attention to any of this kind of thing. The Avengers Sevenfold one made a bit more sense to me and actually seemed to be, if if you're interested in it, worthwhile. Because essentially... Well, it's like you're part of an exclusive... It's almost yeah. like a Patreon in a way, isn't it? He, he like basically, you buy these yeah. NFTs for Avenge and you're part of like... An exclusive, an exclusive club, club, yeah. club for a while. Because he, like, he was like seeing comments, people saying, oh, you're just selling a JPEG. And he was like, no, the JPEG is the key to the club. Yeah. And, and the club is what gets you stuff like tickets for life, meet and greets for life, free merch shipped straight to your house that i can understand but everything i've seen about the metaverse just seems the so me- yeah, lame i just don't see what the, what is it like, like club penguin it seems like it and you've got but you've got to wear like vr goggles and stuff and a headset the whole time you're in there which is just i mean it'd probably give me motion sickness i mean i can't I'd play vr uncomfortable. i can't play exactly. vr that long before needing to take it off because i might puke but i just don't see the la- i don't see it how it has lasting how it's got longevity because surely the novelty is going to wear off so quickly. I don't think quick it does. I think there's 
lots of businesses that have some money in it and they're trying to get as many people on board as possible to try and push it out there but it's failing i think well look in my head it's just like logging into club penguin and meeting up with your mates you know mm. on the racing hill I miss but instead we're going to be able to meet up in a what a slipknot gig in the metaverse well, Why can't we just go to a Slipknot gig in real they're, life? They're trying to push the metaverse out to businesses, aren't they? They're trying to make it like, oh, this is where you'll have meetings. Like, there's that video, isn't there, of Mark Zuckerberg, like, yeah, having a, a very casual, awkward chat to one of his business partners or employees or something in the metaverse. But that man's not really. You don't. You don't need to do. Lizard. You don't need to do it in the metaverse. Just have a meeting over Zoom or in person. It just seems like transferring things into the online space for the sake of it now. I think it was fine during the pandemic. While you, there weren't actual gigs, yeah, it was kind of a substitute. Like this is this was all we could do. But it just seems a bit odd now. In other news, Dream Theater win Grammy for best metal performance for The Alien. They've been nominated three times in their very long career, and they've finally come away with the massive dub. So, wasn't yeah, boy, though, was I it? guess well done. Yeah, fair play to the lads. Yeah, well done, man. Uh, Tom DeLonge has done an interview where he says he loves the meme of the voice inside my yed from uh, I Miss You by Blink-182. Do it properly. Go on, go all the way. The voice inside my yed. I miss you. <laughs> Wonderful. And it was also just interesting to note that he's also not the biggest fan of all the small things, which possibly the biggest Blink song. My brother in Christ, you literally wrote the song. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to be fair, though, he's not wrong. There, I can think of five better Blink songs than that. Go. Damn it. The Rock Show. Always. First date. Down. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm clutching at straws with down there. Yeah, to be about that last yeah, one. Yeah. <laughs> my, to be honest, my brain went a bit, bit dead. Adam song. Wonderful. Uh, Bring Me the Horizons album, Sem Paternal, has recently hit one billion streams on Spotify. Big up to the lads. That's just huge, isn't it? It is, considering Spotify has not been, like, a primary source of music consumption for that long, really. Mm. You think about all the people... And the that album's, what, yeah. ten years old? Nine. No, it's celebrated. It's, so ni- it's ninth it's birthday turning recently. Turning ten soon. Yeah. Okay. Um, a phenomenal achievement, especially for this kind of music as well. And then the only thing I'll have to note to add on to that is that, despite that many streams, they're probably still not earn enough royalties from it directly because streaming pays shit. James, you dropped your mic there, mate. It's a mic drop. Mic drop. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're in it's a true. silly mood today. We are. <laughs> Should we talk about last episode's recommendations now? Let's. All right. Jingle there. James, what did you recommend last time? I recommended Cannibal by Barry Tomorrow. I thought it was cool. It took me a minute to adjust to Danny's vocal style. Um, but I think that's the case with every new metalcore band with harsh vocals. I think it was really cool. I wasn't blown away by it. And I think by about sort of six songs in, I'd had enough. But for me, this band is a bit like McDonald's. When I go, I know I'm going to enjoy it. But I can't have it for dinner every night. So I think... For- that's the famous McDonald's tag. Right? <laughs> yeah. ba 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 just I'll once a week. <laughs> um, but I think I'll just keep dipping in and out of their catalogue between now and download. And it was a good entry point for me. Um, but I just sort of had a limit with how much I could digest at a time. I remember this album being a lot of on a lot of people's album of the year list in 2020. And I can kind of see why. Um, there's some banging choruses, great riffs. Um, unfortunately, I feel like it's quite a front-loaded album. Um, I think Choke and Cannibal are really strong starts. And it's fairly consistent throughout, but because, in a way, because it's so consistent, it gets a bit draining. Because there's no like standout songs in particular; they're all kind of of just a strong standard. It kind of, like Alex said, you kind of get a bit tired of tired of it after a little while. It kind of just blends into one. Especially like you say with Choke and Cannibal, they are such big tunes to open up with. Yeah, and it doesn't necessarily fall off much after that, but it never quite reaches those heights again, um, which is a shame. Um, I really liked the balance of the heavy guitars with um, higher lead melodies layered in in the background as well, and really solid production. Everything's crystal clear. You can hear kind of everything yeah, that's going the, on. The, the production was amazing. Dan, what did you recommend? I recommended Colour Me and Kindness by Basement. 
Uh, I reckon this might be my favorite recommendation from the entirety of this podcast so far. I think if I'd... Had you not listened to Basement much previously? No, I'm, not I'm really. I'm surprised by that. It was uh, just one of those bands that I probably should have done. And I think if I'd found this album when I was like 15, it would be now one of my all-time favorite albums. Because I think it would have struck me even more emotionally then. But even now, it was still just really easy for me to fall into this this style of music and the style of writing, um, especially lyrically. And I just think the run of Pine, Bad Apple and Breathe was like my favourite part of the album. And I'm now going to try and dive into I Wish I Could Stay Here in time for their Outbreak set, which is like a celebration of those two albums, isn't it? Yeah, so. it is. Yeah, uh, very happy. No, I absolutely loved it as well. Um, I thought just consistent, great production throughout. Everything just sounds so crisp. It became my... Uh, like background album, like specifically this, while I was been playing Infamous Second Son recently on PlayStation, and I, I've actually just gone to like our reviews, like playlist for this, and just kept doing this album, and it's just become like the soundtrack to that for me. So I kind of, I think I'm always kind of that association. Um, I absolutely loved it. Covered. It's interesting to say those ones because Covered, Spoiled, and Wish were the ones that really stood out to me. I thought um, Spoiled. The guitars reminded me of a song from Guitar Hero 3 and I can't re remember which one um but it, like kind of gave me like weird good nostalgia from that as well um Covet was really nice and catchy this definitely warrants more listens and like you I, I want to delve into them more now going into Outbreak as well with this um that's what we like very very enjoyable and I just I really love albums that have a really strong identity that you can just sort of fall into at any point in the album i think that's what i liked about this so much is that on a couple of my listens i didn't start from the start i went at a random point and let it just sort of loop mm. you can't just and it, it yeah out. it was just so it was one of those albums that i didn't even notice how many times i'd been listening to it just sort of let it keep playing so nice one dan you're welcome boys and i recommended distant like you asked by like pacific Listening to this just kind of reminded me how much I love pop punk, to be honest. Um, biggest takeaway from the whole thing was the drum work. I think there's like, with pop punk, you can get so set in drum patterns sometimes, where it's the same kind of repetition that comes through. I felt like there was much more creativity. Um, I just like more fun kind of in terms of that as well like much more experimentation it's like we're not just going to do the same kind of beats we're not going to do the same kind of bass drum patterns we're not going to do the same kind of symbols in terms of like how a song structure goes it felt very very creative and fun and then with that in the mix as well the vo the vocals just felt so centric right bang in the middle and absolutely love that yeah just a solid album from start to finish richmond assisted breathing and 22a were my big standouts on this um I remember you playing me some Light Pacific a long time ago. I don't know if it was anything from this album because I can't remember what the song was. But I remember back then thinking, this is a band that I need to listen to and get into more. And off the back of this as well. Yeah, absolutely loved it. It likely would have been this album because I already loved this album and I still love it. It's, there's no skips. Every single song bangs. Um, I don't know why they never got bigger. Like This album was released in 2016 in a time where we were kind of spoilt for pop punk. We had Trash Boat releasing Nothing I Write You, Trophy Eyes releasing um, Chemical Miracle, Neck Deep and Knuckle Puck were touring, Life's Not Out to Get You, and Copacetic. So it was just golden era. a golden era for, for the new wave of pop punk. That's the thing, when there's so, so much good shit happening at once. Yeah, it's just it's just disappointing that like Pacific didn't seem to grow with those other bands I've mentioned because they're still releasing great music now that sounds just as good as this album. Let's look at the latest releases then. So, these latest releases, absolute tunes. We're going to start with Death Ever Colder by Barry Tomorrow. This one I, I really enjoyed a lot more than the album. I think I prefer this clean vocalist's voice. Um... I don't know, it might be a hot take, but I don't care. It is a hot take. I'll get into that in a minute. I think it was a really cool song. I like the sort of the vibe that the soft intro sets up and then it just goes into a thrashing riff. Um, I feel like now that I'm accustomed to Danny's voice, it was much easier for me to enjoy this. And then when the chorus hits, I just I just prefer the tone of this new guy's voice. So I just think it the chorus for me hit a bit better. 
I mean, it's nothing groundbreaking, but when Metalcore is executed this well, then you can see why this band is such a huge name in the genre. I can't really fault this song. Um, it's riffy and heavy, but in kind of control a controlled manner. It doesn't go too far with it. It knows when to hold back. Um, I really like the contrast of the clean vocals with the string section, and then it cuts back to screams with heavy guitars, and the way it kind of jumps between the two without sounding too messy and jarring is really good. And then both sections kind of come together harmoniously towards the end as well. Um, it's great to see them not only continuing but doing stronger than ever, I think. I love this song. I absolutely love it. I've listened to it so much, to be honest. Um, I think it's just really groovy. I think I, I agree with what you said before about Dan's vocals. You have to get into it a little bit. And I think the amount that I've been listening to them in general, I've really got that. And it feels like on this song, he's been able to just level up and the clarity and the range has improved so much. And the performance really stands out and shows. In terms of like new clean vocalist, there was a big thing like with Jason's vocals, the old vocalist being like one of the things that made them stand out. And I see so many comments still and you see people online being like, oh, they wish for that old sound still, but they've got to understand that we're at a new point now. We've got to move on. So it's almost that nostalgic you want what's not there anymore and that tom does have some big shoes to fill but i think he delivers it and helps like make his stamp and put his own kind of sound on this track and i'm I'm intrigued to know the dynamic between him and danny's vocals going forward in this new chapter of how that's going to work um i think the production's great it sounds clean strong catchy lyrics have me from the first listen kind of just hooked and i'm very excited to see them at friday at download Next up, we've got Yenta by 1056. Beautifully heavy. Should we, should we talk about that breakdown? Go, go. I mean, I thought the song was over. I was getting my phone out, ready to see what was next. But yeah, it completely caught me off guard and it was heavy. It's like it comes back for round two and it's just a knockout punch. Like they, They've got such a wall of sound that just kind of goes all the way up until that point anyway. And then it's like, oh, cool. It's always like that round's over. You're going back in for the next round. It's almost like, clock straight away. take it back to the theme of the song, lyrically. It's a bit like, oh, you thought I was done, bitch. It, yeah. It's just such a heavy song. It riffs so hard, but like with a nice attack in the riffs. Like sometimes you kind of, you don't hear that kind of like the pick of it as, as it's hitting the strings. And I think that's where this has so much impact with that. And like they have like moments prior to that kind of like big break in there where there's almost there's those gaps there's those pauses in the song that i think are so effective and push it forward and boost it to another level um i think just like after you've introduced them recently they are just very quickly becoming a band that i am incessantly kind of i'm looking forward to the next release they come out and and what they're going to do because this is i love it it's incredible stitch your guns announced their new album spectre and released the first single weapon just love this band. I think Dan mentioned on a previous episode that Enter Shikari were the first band to sort of politically radicalise you. And Stitch Your Guns was that band for me. I think what always drew me in was that not only were the lyrics like written from the heart, he was able to use his voice in different ways to to show these range of emotions. There's, he sings very delicately at times, but then he can have this brutal scream. Mm. Then he has this sort of the in-between that he uses in the chorus of this song. I think it's a really strong defining feature for this band. And I think also lyrically, a song about wearing your heart on your sleeve, believing in what you feel and standing by it, sums up what I love about this band. And the chorus has got big sing-along potential as well. Something that interests me straight away was seeing the artwork and how it's got the diamond on there. Because that was probably my favourite Stick To Your Guns album. Yeah, and mine. And I feel like this is much more like that kind of sound than the more recent stuff so this upcoming album could be a pretty interesting one if that's the route they're going down because it's obviously deliberate if they're putting that pin on the album essentially yeah because they've been sort of they've been using different logos for different for each album as to sort of signify that chapter so yeah it is interesting to hmm. to basically signal to everyone we're revisiting this sort of headspace again yeah i i love it um, it's just got constant energy with like kind of how up tempo it is throughout and it's driven by like the bass drum which is so prominent in the mix with it that really just pushes that song forward like you kind of mentioned with the vocals there's 
points where it's just like a double track on there off the screams and then the harsh melodic stuff that really just complement each other so so well and just the line in the chorus of my heart is a weapon the amount of times i've just been out and about like around work or something and i just kind of hear that melody line in my head it's just stayed with me so much at random points and i've I've just found myself just seeing that line at work and then people just be like what and i'm like oh no no i'm not saying anything and it's you don't always get that with a song you can you can find so many songs that you just love to listen to and enjoy but to have that kind of like unconscious kind of okay this is just going around in there i think is something really special and a band that i, I need to get into much more for outbreak because i feel like i'm gonna absolutely love it gonna so much it and so yeah big fan of this and uh, i need to check out more stick to your guns for sure i think they're one of the best hardcore bands that actually uses a chorus they write a hook in the chorus mm. because they've got those melodies throughout the whole discography of just little just little phrases, little moments that you will get stuck in your head. Yeah, that's one of the best things about this band, I think. is that Because they could quite, quite easily just make an album of straight up hardcore two-stepping riffs, but they are able to craft like those m- moments, especially live. I can't imagine and what it's going to be like. And they can get a message across as well at the same yeah, time. Yeah, absolutely. So, can't wait. Upon a burning body are back with a new responsibility. And I'm just going to say straight away that it's great. Heavy UABB is my favorite UABB. And it kind of has that strong, heavy start right from the get-go. Um, I feel like the guitars could have a bit more attack in the riffs. Like, it riffs nicely, but it just doesn't kind of have that heaviness that I kind of want and that I've heard from them before. And so it kind of automatically becomes a very much more drum and vocal-centric song. Um I like the space in between like the riffs with it. I like, particularly join the chorus and it helps add to that heaviness, I think. And Danny Leal just still sounds sick. Like his vocals, whether they're clean, kind of some of them were cleans it developed recently and then his different kind of screams that he's done. It always just kind of reminds you of how good he is. And, it, and it's annoying to me of the potential this band had so many years ago and they kind of did some promotional stuff which really did screw them over and that if they hadn't have done that they could be so much bigger and might be a higher tier in this kind of genre yeah i think circling back to the what you said about daniel Leal, he's just amazing he sounds like visceral and angry especially in this song he sounds like pissed off but it's still clear and you can tell what he's saying the whole way through and um yeah it feels like a pretty good transition back into their deathcore sound i feel like like you said, so underrated. They're, the trilogy that they've had from The World Is My Enemy Now up to Southern Hostility has been really, really great metalcore. But I also really still love the first album. So, the World yeah, is ours is a d- to, to, to hear them dip back into that has been really great. What do you think, Dan? I don't know if it's because I left this one to write at the end when I'd been doing my reviews and listening to stuff. And maybe I was a bit fatigued, but it didn't really do a lot for me. It felt a bit overwhelming at times i felt like there was a bit much going on um particularly the drums i felt they were a bit distracting at times um like it just felt like constant double bass and blast beats and stuff um chorus was good though that's the thing like the and, and, it's, and it's not like i'm not saying it's a bad song it's mm. just not for me i guess but even like maybe like, I, the riffs they could have been well i guess maybe better production on them I think that would have made me enjoy it more. I think it's a solid tune and I, I'm looking forward to this re-emergence of a heavy upon a burning body. Like that's why I, I got me into them straight away. Um, like Stuff like Sin City, Texas, Blood Money, Intermission, those are absolute tunes and wonderfully heavy. But yeah, it just felt like it's it's lacking something still slightly. Yeah. But um, I have good faith that they'll find it. And also shout out to Ruben for reviving the lost art of a guitar solo because... That boy shreds and like plays with feel like and plays with soul like and not in a way that I've heard since like Prime Avenged Sevenfold solos. Got those dual guitar solos. Yeah. That's nostalgia. Or like even Dimebag solos. It's the way he plays it just fucking rips a solo. So good. I love it. Spaceman by Electric Callboy. Oh my God. The, 190 seconds. It jams all of those. I absolutely love it. It's catchy. It's fun. 
we've got lovely screams, solid instrumentals, a chorus that'll have you singing along, a great flow to it. It just has everything. An incredible music video, which just you know you're going to get from Electric Cowboy now. And it's one of those songs that when I was listening to it, I just find myself either laughing or smiling to myself. And like when I've got headphones and I'm just like an absolute fucking idiot. But you just kind of get caught up in it, in how fun it is. And then you're also headbanging along to riffs. Thing is, it's kind of a bit of shit. But yeah. It's meant to be. But still done very well. Yeah. I mean, I was watching um, Justin Hawkins from The Darkness has started doing, started doing a lot of YouTube videos now. Um, he did a video where he talked about Electric Cool Boy. And he pointed out that to do this kind of parody, you've got to have a very kind of elite understanding and knowledge of the genre that you're doing a parody of. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You can't half ass it in to, any way. To be able to pull it off like Electric Cool Boy do, yeah. then you've you've got to be talented enough to do it. And I and I agree with what Justin Hawkins says there. Yes. Yeah. They are clearly talented. And yeah, they know exactly what they're doing. It's it's cheesy and catchy. And I'm now relearning German so I can rap along. <laughs> From something fun to something not as fun. And that is the new song by Five Finger Death Punch, Afterlife. It just feels a bit odd, doesn't it? It's kind of like, it's basically a pop song, but it's Five Finger Death Punch doing it. It's disappointment. Just they, They've just lost all of the the kick that their like, early music has. Like you think about the first album, the first lyric is Zoltan open the skies and then a sh- and then a shredding solo. Yeah, yeah. And, and then to go from that to this just feels like they've just lost all the oomph and <sighs> It's weird because like we grew up on them a lot. And like you, you hear that instant like the guitar tones that are just it's their sound and their snare drum, how they have it produced, they've had that produced constantly. Um and it's like that weird nostalgia but then it also has staleness because they've just never, not never, they've just not developed, I don't know, into into a, what they could have been. And again, a band that have had so much potential at times. At one point, I think they had pretty much most of the music industry, like in this genre, at least talking about them. They became such a hot topic and they could have capitalized on that and they didn't. And like you say, they, there used to be so much like aggression in your face stuff with like where the fifth dying breed when you open up wars the answer with that kind of song that's not there anymore and no. even like the small details like for me from the drum point like more recent stuff you don't hear much double bass anymore like that used to be such a like a, a strong and good driving force during the verses in particular there isn't any of that anymore and it feels like they they were building they were building they had a drop off and then they just kind of plateaued and stayed the same ever since wrong side of heaven part one, one i'd yeah. say first three albums yeah up until that were good and you could hear progression and what they were trying to do and since then it's been i've I've dipped in and out of the albums as, they, as they've been released but it's not been anything different or special which is again disappointing something else i found quite funny was that oliver tree song that's like on and on and on <laughs> which is yep. clearly a parody mm. however um, Applies. Five Finger Death Punch have just done it deliberately, basically, in that um, pre-chorus. Yeah, they they got no s- awareness, have they? Self-awareness. Five Finger Death Punch. Shame. And I am begging them, explore a new guitar tone. Please. It's so old, man. <laughs> You've done it for eight albums. Bleed From Within have released Stand Down, um, a band that I've noticed more and more based on Spotify recommending it to me. Hence, I kind of like pulled this one out, like amongst all the releases that have have been, well, released. It's just some solid metalcore with some really groovy and heavy riffs, unrelenting double bass drums, all underneath what I found to be just a really strong vocal performance. And there's some moments of like nice vocal like flexion during the chorus that got my attention of just how the lines kind of change like up in the delivery slightly, which really really enjoyed. I love the switch into the bridge and the breakdown. Um, these sections just really gave a chance to show off some of the nice feels behind the drums, especially with that drum like ending as well. Um, you kind of think the song's going to peter off a little bit, and it's got a lovely little flurry, uh, a little flourish at the end. Really, really nice. And a band that I kind of want to try and get into a lot, lot more, and maybe even catch them at download. 
Uh, yeah, I enjoyed it. Nothing stood out particularly for me on this one. It, like you said, James, it's just a good metalcore song. I don't think they've done anything that special particularly. It's just tick metalcore song done. Yes, no thoughts, head empty. And the last single, While She Sleeps, have released Eye to Eye from the deluxe edition of Sleep Society. Loz's cleans have got good, haven't they? Very good. You think back to early stuff and it was like, Loz is screaming, Matt's doing cleans, that's it. And now it's just like, look at us, a we're, a li- we're a little choir. Um, I want to start by talking about the music video, actually. Because I think a lot of bands nowadays, the importance or the art of a music video seems to be sort of dying away and I think this is proof that you can take a 10 out of 10 song and make it an 11 out of 10 song by just marrying it with really strong visuals and a compelling story that relates to the lyrics so that's first of all and second of all I think they're just nobody does what they do in this whole scene like they can balance melody and calm with crushing heaviness but it's never out of place Uh, what do you guys think? I just know the sleep banger isn't it? Like, I find myself seeing the chorus constantly again. It just kind of catches you and great mel- melody line in that. And I feel like as a, as a whole kind of thing, they've they've mastered the, the art in their career of like every album, they'll add something to their sound. And it feels like, although this is part of the Sleep Society like kind of bonus edition, they've spent more time in the past few months working on it. And it feels like even in those months in between Sleep Society being released and they've they've toured it and done all this and then they've gone back to studio to work on all of this that they're still then kind of got that development as if this is like an extra like point five of an album they've 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 found further things that they can add to it and just create an entire new kind of part of their wall of sound they have which is amazing echo exactly what you say about Loz's vocals sounding great the cleans yeah but I especially kind of pointed out the end section screams right at the end it just sounds like he's reaching a new level of strength in the de- delivery and range. And then you compare that to the North Stands for Nothing when it's shit technique. He he is known he's had so many vocal surgeries and fucked it up. And then you hear how strong, how powerful it is now. It's almost like for someone that's like us that have listened to them for so long, it's like almost proud dad moment in a way you're like, he can scream phenomenally now. It, it's amazing. And yeah, video absolutely fantastic and just draws you in you, you it's such a cinema kind of feel to that and oh, i love it i was quite interested interested to discover that this was originally an idea for so what this song was meant to be on that album but didn't quite fit um so they've reworked it and it's now made not the album after that but the bit after that the album after the album after that i always way. love that because like sean posted that up like old clips of it and that was, that was a part that I loved about the Beartooth record with Caleb when he put the bit of, I think it was Phantom Pain. And it's like, on the social media, you can follow these bands and like it's, see like little clips of it. And it's, it's like, like that meme of Leonardo DiCaprio pointing at the TV. Yeah. It's like, you, you kind of finally see... I saw that riff on Instagram six yeah. weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> but you see like that progression, like you hear these like snippets and bits of like when they're in the studio ages ago and then you see it just come full circle and actually hearing it as a, a fully formed song that they release and like push it so publicly and do an incredible job on it's something really cool to see that progression i think yeah sean's been the elevating factor for this band because not only is he shredding beyond all comprehension adding in this the, what he's doing with synthesizers and creating j- just a sound that no one else is doing and if anyone else tries it's, it's not going to come close anyway and i think it's just pure wizardry and also shout out to him with his signature guitar oh, yeah. that he's even getting like Jim Reed playing on stage. Like to see your idols doing that, that's mm. that's fucking incredible. I know it's quite an interesting detail as well. There's like a little sigh from Loz at the start. Like considering how heavy the kind of themes of the lyrics of this song are. And it's almost like a oh, here we go then. Mm. Like a yeah. get, getting things off his chest kind of thing. It, and it's almost like that relates to the because he sort of plays two characters in the music video and that sigh sort of reminds me of the the shy nervous character like the worried character that he plays yeah sort of like oh okay now we've got to 
start fighting these demons now. Mm. It's like, here we go. I also really like yeah, the... I don't, know, I don't know if it was deliberate or not, yeah. but if it is, it's genius, mm. really. I like the sort of the soft choir in the uh, we don't see eye to eye no more part. Just feel, I think it's really good because it for a song that lyrically, I guess, it's quite isolating in its nature. It's about, you know, it's you against you. And then to have that soft choir there is sort of, I think, just really good. To, it's a good way of sort of breaking that and sort of sort of subconsciously saying, look, you're not actually on your own. There's a, 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 there's a wall of people behind you, you know, helping you out. That you've just hit. I'll just hit the wall. There's <laughs> <laughs> a literal wall behind you. <laughs> but I thought it, I thought it was great. And now on to our only album of the reviews, and that is the unraveling of Pup the Band by Pup the Band. <laughs> well, I'm there. Right. Well, I think seeing some of your social media posts recently, Alex, I think Pup have won you over, have they, with this one? Massively so. Yeah, I just, I just love it. I think I said it um, when we reviewed Matilda, but it's the sort of how they're effortlessly hopeless but relentlessly optimistic. It's like they're not they're never going down without a fight sort of mentality to the to their sound and I just really like it. There's the way that like the guitar can go from this really dancing, super happy melody, and then the next song is something like I mean, even within a song like Totally Fine, the verses are like punishing and really angry. And then the chorus explodes and it's just like like in the video when like they're dancing, dancing to, yeah. yeah. I just I really really loved it. And one thing that I noticed production wise is that when Stefan's singing with sort of anger or like the harshness in his voice, he seems to be sort of buried slightly in the mix. And yet when he sings delicately, he's then pushed higher. I think I've noticed it firstly on Matilda when it gets to the um by was everything you need part. It was like suddenly he's now at the forefront. It's like he's shouting to get the attention yeah. and when he gets it he's actually holding himself back and then from on probably the two more aggressive songs they have on grim reaping and um bankruptcy it, yeah he's, there's clearly some kind of vocal distortion on there as well yeah i i just i really like the whole album mm. the, i think be, being a big pup fan i actually first listened i was a little underwhelmed and i think it's because of that vocal mix yeah i think being used to having listening to pup songs and having Stefan like right in your face screaming the, the words I think like you said it was a bit more buried and there's so much noise going on from everything else that it was almost a little bit lost mm -hmm. in there but the more I listened to it the more I kind of got used to that and now I, I love this album I think it was purposeful though it was like to, yeah, to create this sense of like struggling to get get yourself heard over you know everything else that's going yeah. on so, well, I just want to stay on that point there with that kind of like with, with the vocal mix what I found really interesting is that when he's performing on there, it's so central central to the, like the song at that moment, and that I was really drawn to hearing that. And like, the the instrumentals kind of like drop down a complete tier to let him shine, but then as soon as he drops out, it's like they raised right back up, so it kind of gives them a chance to shine more. It's like there was a nice back and forth and the, the dynamic and the mix between them, which was just it was refreshing in a way because it was like almost binary that you, you wouldn't have one without the other i think that's like the sort of the fighting between him and the instrument instrumentals sort of relates to i think it's in one of the um four chords songs where he's gonna, like i, I, say, could, I vote to end democracy in the band i was or gonna something. say could that kind of tie in with almost the theme of the album of them yeah. being like Unraveling. a business and mm. falling apart kind of thing yeah, because they've done songs previously, like if if this tour doesn't kill you, where they've mentioned themselves kind of falling out with each other. Yeah, yeah, I think that that sort of was it was like him against the band at times. I think it was an interesting dynamic. I might have had the four chords trilogy break it up as well. Like yeah, it felt I like it gave a nice points throughout the album. Like even though they're the kind of songs they are and the content in one of the, I think the third one is like nine seconds of just like a part where it just ends with him just on the piano, just kind of smashing it. But like. It broke it up very, very well. Mm. They, um, at first, it seems like they're there kind of just for comedic effect. But firstly, like the first four chords kind of bled perfectly and it's totally fine. I yeah. think that was a brilliant way to start the album. And like where he fucks up on the piano and plays the wrong mm. key. Mm. Whether that was deliberate or not, I don't know. But either way, it's funny. It's and hard, then, to, it's and hard then, to tell with this band, isn't it? Yeah, it yeah. is. And then like the, the second edition of four chords, five chords... Um, 
that to me felt like almost being in an elevator and going up to the next level. Then when the doors are, doors open, you have waiting there just to slap you in the face. Great with, riffs on with that. some heavy riffs. Love and, the riffs on that. Just a huge chorus, which is basically just three words. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> it's just lighthearted and fun as well, like throughout it. It wasn't something like even just listening to it, like to critically kind of analyze and go through because it felt like such enjoyment. And you kind of get a sense that when they're writing this as well, they're just having fun with it. It's just, yeah, it's just really, really enjoyable for that. I think the singles to me definitely still stand out as very strong and probably my favorites. It was totally fine. And Matilda in particular, like absolutely love them. And I just enjoyed like the distinct sound they have in their production. Because they don't sound like anyone else. It's very unique. And I'd, like you don't necessarily know who you can compare them to. I also think it's interesting that they that the trilogy was called Four Chords. And yet, I think they're so good at crafting a chord progression that's like completely unique. But yet, like when you hear it, it's like so obvious in hindsight that that's where that chord progression was going. But the first time, like the first time I heard the start of Robot Writes a Love Song, I was like, mm. "What the hell is this?" And now it's just like a, that. It couldn't have been anything else. Yeah. Like. And then to the whole four chords thing sort of being a parody of that, I think it was just really cool. Yeah. Like, like James said, I think the singles were probably the better songs. I think Totally Fine was my favourite. Um, but of the non-singles, I'd say Habits stood out to me the most. Um, my only kind of gripe with it is that that synth start doesn't reappear throughout the rest of the song. Yeah. And it felt like it would have been good to have that kind of crop up again. But... Other than that, I really liked it. Great album. I cannot wait for 2000 Trees. Uh, it's probably now my most anticipated set of that festival. Mine too. Nice. But it already was. <laughs> and so if you're thinking, guys, what about so many of the other releases that have come out this month? Uh, go back on the channel or where, wherever you're listening to this and look and you'll find a bonus little episode where you've got Architects, Tala, The Wonder Years, Boston Manor, Static Dress and Veil of Maya who all released incredible music in a very very short space of time so we thought we're not going to fit it in the main podcast we'll do something separate so go and check that out and uh yeah here are our thoughts on those incredible tunes i also just want to do a quick shout out uh to another release that happened this month and it's different from what we usually talk about it's a friend of mine isaac uh he released a two-song ep called bounce and all-star under the name eyes on spotify um he's genre is kind of like chill uk rap with it he's working on a lot of good music at the moment he comes from a metal background as well which is really interesting um there will probably be an episode of his perfect gig sometime in the future and uh yeah if you're fans of ashbeck and loyal kana he said he uses kind of those kind of similar beats to it so go like, check them out i like, I like a bit of loyal kana yeah there you go go and check out isaac's music well, i will shout out isaac my boy right upcoming releases 6th of May, we've got Back From The Dead by Hailstorm, Ibaraki, Matt Heafy's side project releasing Rashomon, and Upon A Burning Body releasing Fury. And then on the 20th of May, Malevolence are releasing Malicious Intent. Anything that stands out to you most in those releases? I'm massively looking forward to Ibaraki, or Ibarak, I don't know how you pronounce it. Um, I've really enjoyed the singles. I know you two aren't that into your black metal. I, however, I, I did listen to the one with mm. um, Gerard Way on it. That was yeah. quite impressive. Um, I just, yeah, I'm really excited to see how it is because I feel like he's got such a distinct sound within Trivium that now we're getting a chance to hear him do something new. So, yeah, very excited for that. Anything for you? Malevolence for me, I think. Um, they just keep putting out bangers. They seem like a really exciting band and we'll probably be seeing them at Download, I believe. Architects, Sleep Token, and, and Malevolence. Yeah, and literally in like a week and a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, those two for me is the Eponymous and Body, Fury, and Malevolence, to be honest. I, th- I feel like from what I've heard from bits before, they could be a band that I could very much get into. So I'm hoping for a good album there. And we'll probably have like five of our favourite bands drop songs just out of nowhere again. So Probably in the space of 48 we've got, hours. We've got that to look forward to. God forbid. Should we take a look at some comments we've had on our YouTube channel? Yeah, go on then. Let's do it. Uh, first up, we've got Brad West from Against the Sun. He's watched our uh, Neck Deep Beginner's Guide video. The and homie. He said, they definitely caught my attention with that acoustic version of In Bloom. So quite a recent quite a recent Neck Deep fan. 
that's interesting to be fair um, hopefully the beginner's guide has given them a chance to check out some of their older stuff that that is the intents and purposes and it's, it's nice to see more and more people like have recommended bands that they want to see it for as well whether it be they're fans of the band and just kind of want to see what comes out of it or it's a band they want to get into yeah so yeah that, that's definitely cool yeah always welcome that as well so if you want to get into a band you maybe don't know where to start chuck it in the comments and we'll try try our best to help and then a sh- shout out to brad west and against the sun for being massive legends yeah great band we've had connor roberts commenting on our download update it, he says it will be my first ever festival just going for the day on Saturday, purely to see Maiden, but looking forward to it. Heard good things about Download. We think Connor's going to have a good time. He's going to have a great time. There's, you'll, you'll struggle to find a nicer group of festival goers than at Download. So polite. Everyone's so nice to everyone. And uh, I think going for the day is probably a good option if it's your first festival. Um, yeah, just to kind of dip, dip your toe yeah, in yeah. the water. Or the mud. Or the, you, well, we'll, we'll hopefully. So that's like, for me, that was slam dunk. This is like... That as a one day festival, that was quite a, kind of nice to go to. Just yeah. like you say, dip your toe in and, and get that. So yeah, you're gonna have a great time. And go and check out so many of the cool bands are on that day. Uh, Kiri saw has commented on our most recent podcast episode, saying, "Can't wait for Slam Dunk." Also worried about the stage splits. The stage they announced looks amazing, but I hope they don't collide Hot Mulligan with Mum Jeans. We agree. We want to see Hot Mulligan and Mum Jeans. Don't yeah, we? definitely. That was my big. Uh, this will be the last time I say it, but I was really annoyed at the the clashes last 2019 slam dunk. So hopefully they sort it out a little bit. I mean, I know that they've said that the three headliners won't clash at all, so it's a good start. I think since this comment, the stage splits have come out as well. I think Hot Mulligan and Mumjis might be on the same stage. I've got a feeling so, they might be. Yeah. So you're gonna be alright. You're safe. You're safe. And then the deal cam has commented on our bare tooth tier list. Uh, think we definitely need to bring me the horizon one of these i think we can probably do that absolutely yeah we can, we, we, we can do that we can get done it's gonna involve a bit of homework listening to um count your blessings <laughs> again <laughs> but definitely we'll add that to the list plenty more tier lists to come oh god yeah and finally we've got cameron m commenting on our slam dunk vlog from last year i miss being crushed in that trash boat crowd we miss being crushed in a slam dunk mosh pit as well but it's right around the corner we're so close. Festival se- I mean, technically it's already started because you guys went to Underground Festival last month. Yeah. True, true. Go check that but, vlog out. But man, when it when the summer sun hits and you've got a little bit a little bit of heat stroke. That's amore. <laughs> sun, <laughs> pints and pop punk. It's going to be... Oh, it's going to be such a great wonderful day. Wonderful day. Hopefully we get the same weather as last year because that was just beautiful. Thank you everyone for your comments. Um, comment on, on, on maybe this video, our upcoming videos, and you might get read out on the next podcast. Yeah, and he, he, ask a question as well. We'll take questions. Random questions. Sometimes abuse. <laughs> Not for Muse fans, though. Today's discussion, we're going to be talking about Dream Album Anniversary Tours. Recently, there's been the announcement of the Wonder Years doing The Upsides in Suburbia at Slam Dunk. We've got Basement doing Colour Me and Kindness. And the other one, which I can't remember now. Me neither. <laughs> um, but that's great that's, album though. It's sort of got us so thinking. There's about a bit it, of a trend at the moment of bands doing reuni- not reunion tours, of bands doing anniversary tours. anniversary tours. So we thought about some that we might like to see. I'm going to start with one that wasn't a tour, but it was a one-off show, and it will never be able to happen again in the same way. But it's Linkin Park playing Hybrid Theory at Download 2014. I mean, for me, I think Hybrid Theory is top five albums all time, all genres, all music ever. Still, I think, the best-selling album of the 2000s. Could be. It's definitely if the not, best. It's, it's definitely be the best. There. Surely the best-selling alternative album, oh, at for least. Sure for that, sure. Yeah. I think the only competition you ever had at any point that I remember is like something like Adele. Yeah. But obviously with Chester not being around, it, it can never happen in the same way again. But even still, Hybrid Theory is such an amazing album for me. It was, And I think for a lot of people, the album that is the gateway to alternative and heavy music and I'm just so envious of the crowd that were able to be there for, for that year of download because if I had a time machine. It does feel like an I was there kind of moment for anyone that was there, doesn't it? Yeah. You had the chance to see that. I think like a big one for me that I would have liked to have gone to, like, looking back, is the Corn. I think it was 20-year anniversary tour yeah. of debut album. And to hear... I mean, there's songs like, I guess, like Daddy is never going to get played probably ever again. 
they brought it out back into the set list just for that purely um and to see kind of like that album played in its entirety along with obviously other big tunes that they have would be something very special and i'm kind of bummed out that i, mi- I miss that um so like looking back as kind of a retrospective yeah i, I wish I'd, I'd gone to go and see that tour was there one that you've missed dan that you lie awake um, thinking about or not? i can't think one think of one that i missed but one that I would have liked to have happened is a Biffy Clara Only Revolutions album anniversary tour because man, just an iconic album, so many bangers on it. Could still and happen one day, depending on the yeah. anniversary. Got another like eight years. It came out in twenty ten. Oh god, uh, 50, so, do a fifteen so, year one. So we've missed the t- yeah fifteen years. Yeah. is fine. Yeah, that's the most frustrating thing when I was t- trying to wrap my brain for this discussion is like so many of these albums have just missed. 10 or 20 years or or yeah mm. like one that stood out to me that i want to see happen is slip not doing the self-titled album in full things we've missed the 20 years just point. missed we've just missed 20 years are they going to be around to do a i don't think <laughs> yeah i don't really think so it's a shame i feel like yeah the opportunity's sort of been and gone now um i don't know 25 is still significant could happen 25 of a century yeah other than that i think I'd be, that for sure. yeah but I love that. That's my personal favourite Slipknot album. So then from like my side of that, it would be if I saw like a special one of Iowa. Because then that, that I think is my favourite album of all time. And to, I mean, they they open the set with like People Equal Shit into Disaster Pieces, I think I'd download and like kind of like straight away into that. They're such strong visceral songs. But then just to kind of go through that album, I think there's so many hidden gems like in the the, the latter half of it, like The Shape, I Am Hated, um, metabolic things that songs that don't get played often and the songs they've brought out on recent tours playing for the first time so underrated album for me from them another one for you dan one that i was lucky to attend actually was uh in 2017 at a slam dunk and jakari did a take to the skies 10 year anniversary headline set nice which was really good obviously they don't, they don't play too many songs from the album live now it's kind of I'd say it's aged a bit. It's kind kind of got a bit lost in the times. But hearing songs like Johnny Sniper and Mothership was just and okay time for Plan B. That was huge. That, yeah, that must have been the headline set. Are there any others that like, particularly you're like you listen to an album or like off the top of your head you're like I'd love to see that one in particular? I, I think it's one of those things. There's so many to choose from that it's hard to just kind of zone in on one. Yeah, I think the ones that have stood out to me have been I've not been able to really think of many recent albums it's been mostly things that are from like my childhood that I grew up adoring and one of that is Avenged Sevenfold self-titled album I'd also take Awake in the Fallen anniversary tour in a heartbeat in a second heartbeat hey. um, but self-titled is like I was obsessed with that album to an almost unhealthy degree. You were so obsessed with that album, you drove me away from listening to Avenged Sevenfold for a good few years because it was just, <laughs> it was so... Just around the house all the time. It was. I just heard it. And I, I introduced them to you. So then I was just like, well, this band that I like, I can't listen to anymore because of you. But also the thing with the self-titled album is they did a making of documentary where they went through and dissected every single song. And so for me, I felt like I knew that album inside and out everything behind it every song every, every instrument layer of instrument you studied that album. yeah and uh it's a shame that um again would never be able to hear it played with the rev i, I go, often go back and watch the um lbc 2008 live mm. dvd and the songs that they played from the album then live a little piece of heaven from that so, DVD yeah, stands yeah. out so much a little piece me. of heaven as the encore song yeah with confetti falling just so perfect and also waking the fallen is one of the best metal albums Big up for Venice Sevenfold. <laughs> I got one more, and it's an album that I don't think I've really spoken about on the podcast before, but it's Life Gone Wrong by the UK hardcore band Landscapes, which is not a very big album, but it was just one of those bands, you know when you find a band that's quite small and you feel in a, an attachment to them, real attachment, and sort of like a like protective of that band, like I want to see them succeed. And, and then your band. Yeah. And they split up after this. This was their first album and they split up after their second album. And it was like before I was old enough to go to one of their shows. And so it's one of those albums that really has stuck with like, I, I feel like I've grown out of a lot of what I was listening to when I was in my teenage years. And it's an album that's still stuck with me. And I would just 
is it give is, anything. is there is it just a case really of like you'd want them to come back and tour so you could experience seeing them yeah definitely and I, and I would be i mean their second album was great but this is one of those albums like i said with basement at the start of the episode you just get into that wave of the album and you you can just go all the way through on repeat so another one for me actually maybe maybe more so because i'd want to see them come back is um kids and glass houses their album dirt would have turned 10 years old in 2020 um which obviously they wouldn't have been able to do at all for but yeah i think they would they were just they would it felt like they were just about to break through and do something really really special yeah kids, kids and glass houses were my favorite band when i was like 13 14 yeah. and i think sean smith again he i think he's it was him that said Kids and Glass Houses are basically the 1975, but heavier, which I think is a really good point, and which is why I think Kids and Glass Houses could have gone on to be something huge, which, yeah. So my, my anyway, I'd want them back for an anniversary tour just to kind of experience them again, I think. And why don't you let us know in the comments if there is one album you would like to see on an anniversary tour. All right, before we wrap up, let's all recommend one album james you get first i spent time just scrolling through everything i've kind of got saved on my spotify to try and i don't know get inspiration i guess of what i'm going to do and then an album artwork jumped out to me and it's an album you'll both know i saw it and i was like you know what i have not listened to that in a long long time and so i'm recommending american idiot by green day cool nice it is the pathway album to me being a metal fan. It was so crucial to where I am as a, a music fan now. I owe so much to this album and fuck it, let's give it a spin again. Yeah, fuck it, come on. <laughs> what would you like to recommend, Dan? I'm not sure if mine might be the first time we've had a reoccurring band come up. At least I've already recommended them anyway. But as we're going to Slam Dunk soon, I thought I'd recommend The Wonder Years, Suburbia, I've Given You All and Now I'm Nothing. The Wonder Years. The Wonder Years. Obviously, they're playing at Full at South, where we're going, so time for some revision. Let's jam it. Mine is also related to someone that we're going to be seeing at a festival. I'm recommending Internal Incarceration by Year of the Knife. They're playing Outbreak. Their 2019 debut album, Ultimate Aggression, was technically two EPs put together as a full length, um, which I loved. And this is an excuse for me to listen to this album as well, because we did a, we've done a it won't be out yet. We've done a preview video for Outbreak that will be coming out soon and we talked about a lot of bands that I think we should be seeing. And Year of the Knife is one that uh, I think could go under the radar uh, in the scene a little bit. So just want to see how you guys react to it. Be sure to be subscribed to the channel. Check out all our vlogs. We've got so much shit coming up this summer. Go check out our festival preview video where you'll see all these amazing places where we go in the summer. Slam Dunk, Outbreak, download and more um just get a hype for it and if you're going to those you're gonna have such a sick time as well so who knows maybe you'll see us and it's been a bit of a hectic month so we've also done a little episode called bonus bangers it's got some more reviews from architects static dress boston manor and more you can check that out on youtube spotify apple podcasts and if you're listening to this on spotify or apple podcasts make sure you hit follow and leave us a five star review and pay us a little compliment and come and visit our YouTube channel as well. We're not just the podcast. We're doing vlogs. We're doing tier lists. We're doing all sorts at the moment. Come and say hello and comment something. Like hello. Let's wrap it up. And we're, we're going done. to eat pizza now. Bye-bye.